Welcome to the exam review of the UK actuarial professions CT6 paper for September 2013. I'm John Lee, a tutor from ACTED, the actuarial education company, which provides tuition on behalf of the actuarial profession. In this video, we'll give a brief overview of each of the questions on this paper, but for more detailed solutions, then please refer to our asset, which stands for ACTED Solutions with Exam Technique which give both model and alternative solutions, as well as a thorough explanation of all the steps. This will be available from January 2014 from our eStore, in time for students' preparation for the April 2014 exams. And so we're off, and the first question is on Bayesian estimation, where we're calculating the posterior estimate under all or nothing loss. Well, this will be straightforward. However, the question then takes a terrible turn where it asks us to write it in the form of a credibility estimate. Whereas in past questions, we've only done this for the Bayesian estimate under quadratic loss, i.e. the mean of the posterior. So what do we do? Well, we'll start with our mode of a posterior. And the hint is in the question, because we're given the mode of a beta distribution, which is our prior. Well, the worrying thing is, do we then do the mode of our likelihood of our sample data? Well, fiddling around with what you've got, and trying to get it fit the answer, it turns out no, we're still going to use our maximum likelihood estimate. Well, not a good start, so let's shove on to another question. Question two. Claims have an exponential distribution, and we want to calculate the expected amount under this layer reinsurance. Well, we've not had one of these since April 2005. So yet another twist. Well, we just use the same principle as we've done before, to get E of Z, we'll split our distribution up into three parts, 0 to 80, 80 to 160, and greater than 160. And then to find the mean, we just take the value of Z, which is 0, 0.5x minus 40, x minus 120, and times it by the PDFs. Well, not too bad, as long as you can do integration by parts. Question 3 is on ruin theory, but no adjustment coefficients this year. Part 1 is the standard bookwork definitions of the probability of ultimate ruin and ruin in finite time. Part 2, we're asked to calculate the annual premium. We just use our formula, 1 plus theta times lambda times E of x. But part 3 will be a little bit exciting. As to work out this probability of ruin, we're going to have to do it from first principles. And we've not had one of these since ooh, September 96, which is in our second Q&A bank in our course notes. Not too hard to do, but just a little fiddly. So at time zero, you pay your premium. Then at time one, you look at what could have happened. Then the first year, we could have a serious injury, which will result in ruin, or just an injury, or no injury. Then we pay our next premiums, and then work out what happens in the second year. We could have a serious injury, which results in ruin, or an injury, or no injury. Work out all the probabilities, and you'll be done. Question 4. Test Monte Carlo simulation. Part 1 is just a bog-standard inverse transform method for a discrete random variable. Part 2 should look familiar, because it's question 2 from the April paper. We're told the upper quartile of an exponential distribution is 2.5, and we want to calculate its mean. Well, that will mean the probability that the exponential is less than 2.5 is three quarters. We'll use the CDF from the tables, rearrange to get your lambda, and then you can get your expectation. But part three is where we have yet another twist. We need to generate random samples from Z, which takes our discrete distribution with probability 0.2, or our exponential distribution with probability 0.8. Well, how do we do one like that? Well, we're going to use a similar method to what we do with acceptance rejection. We'll simply choose another random number, and if that's less than 0.2, then we'll simulate a value from x. And if it's greater than 0.2, then we'll simulate a value from y. In both cases, using the inverse transform method. And on to question 5. Well, it starts off asking about premium loading again. And then talks about three approaches to reinsurance again. And then it talks about the optimal decision under Bayes' criteria. So it's a decision theory question but with rather a lot of work to do first of all. This is similar to September 2003, question 10, and probably one of the easiest ways of approaching this, draw up a profit table, 
with each of the three states of nature, which are industrial accident, accident or no accident, and then calculate the profit for each of the reinsurance options, A, B and C. This is going to be a little bit fiddly because you'll need to work out the premium, take off the reinsurance premium, take off the net claim that's kept by the insurer. Some students may get slightly confused at what 30% proportional reinsurance means. Does that mean the proportion kept or the proportion passed on? Well, any sensible guess would say it will be 30% passed on, as passing on 70% of a claim seems a little bit suspicious, but at worst you'll lose one mark had you done it the other way round. And on to question six. It's a runoff triangle using the average cost per claim method with grossing up factors. Well, we've not had one of these since April 2009, but this is disgustingly straightforward and should have presented absolutely no problems whatsoever to any well-prepared candidate. And in fact, is our first question without any twists. Question seven, and we're told that claims come in as a Poisson process with parameter 20 and the claim amounts are exponential with mean 100. And we want to work out the mean and variance of the total claim amount. Well, this will be no problem. We'll just use our compound Poisson formulae given in the tables, except there's a twist. Each claim will pay a minimum of 50 pounds. So actually, this is again a bit like an excess of loss, but it's a minimum 50 instead of maximum of 50 and will require copious amounts of integration by parts again. But hey, they've given us a useful formula, so it'll be slightly less painful. Even if you hadn't got out the mean and variance from part one, in part two, you could simply take those and fit a log normal distribution using method of moments. Well, this will be no problem. We just equate the mean and variance formulae from the tables to our answers in part one. And once we've got that, we should be able to calculate the probabilities. Part three is an explanation question. And it's going to be a standard question that we've had many times before about the normal distribution tailing off quite fast, whereas the log normal has a longer tail and so is better for modeling claims. And we're up to question eight with some unknown distribution and we're asked to derive the maximum likelihood estimate. This should have presented no problems whatsoever as we just follow our standard steps. Then in part two, we have our twist where we're going to show this is a member of an exponential family, which makes this question similar, but more generous than September 2009 question four. Don't panic about this, just follow your nose. Write it as a power of an exponential and then you'll discover you can rewrite it as y times something with alphas, take away something with alphas. There's no scale parameter, and so this term will be your theta or natural parameter. Moving on to question nine, and this is the second of our straightforward questions. Part one is just book work, where we have to regurgitate the three stages of the Box Jenkins approach. Part two is saying what time series would fit the displayed ACF and PACF. Well, the axes may not be clear, but the cutoff of the ACF is, so that should present no problem. For the next part, we're given an armor 2-1, and we're asked to derive the Yule-Walker equations. But mysteriously, it doesn't ask us to solve them, but yet still gives us six marks. Excellent. And part three is just chatting about the fact that we'll see decay, but it won't ever reach zero. And on to our final question. We're given requests come in as a Poisson mu, and the mu follows a gamma. Yes, it's another Bayesian estimation question. So deriving the posterior would have presented no problem. And then in part two, we're asked to show that it can be written as a credibility estimate. Again, well, that will present no problem as the Poisson gamma is one of the standard models that we cover in our tutorials. Part three, we simply have to stick the numbers into our formula. Well, so far so good, but then it all takes a downward turn. We're told that three quarters of requests follow one distribution and the remaining quarter follow another distribution and we're asked to calculate the probability of how long it will take. This requires us to work with conditional probabilities and is quite similar to October 2011, question seven. To work out the probability that the time is more than 30 minutes, we'll split it up to the probability it's more than 30 minutes given that it was a hard question times the probability it was a hard question Add on the probability it takes more than 30 minutes given that it's an easy question, times by the probability it's an easy question. Part B, we have to calculate the average time, and we'll just use a similar approach. 
we'll work out the average if it's a hard question times the probability it's hard plus the average if it's an easy question times the probability it's easy essentially we're using our conditional formula e of x is equal to the expectation of e of x given y for part c to get the expected total time we simply take our answer to part b which is the average time of each request and then multiply it by the average number of requests and then in part 5 the line manager is modeling the time taken for a request using an exponential and we'll need to fit an exponential distribution to the average time well this feels disgustingly familiar to two previous questions on this paper but shouldn't be a bother the mean of an exponential is 1 over lambda and set this equal to the average time of a request that we worked out in part 4b it should then be no bother to work out the probability it's more than 30 minutes and then we're going to be chatting about whether this is a good or bad estimate the final part of this question does a similar thing but this time with a variable distribution we're told the probability it takes longer than 30 minutes is 10 percent so we can use the cdf of this distribution from this you'll be able to get your exponential lambda again and therefore work out at the average as 13.029 then we make use of part 4b where we say the mean is the mean given that it's a hard query times the probability it's hard plus the mean given that it's an easy query times the probability it's easy but for the hard queries we'll be using the Vabel distribution which isn't too much bother but obviously if you couldn't do it in the earlier parts you won't be able to do it now so overall eight of the ten questions had a little twist to it and there was a heavy emphasis on Bayesian estimation and credibility theory as well as excess of loss and the exponential distribution well as long as you could integrate by parts you would have been fine and that may have been the undoing for some students if you'd like to chat with fellow students about this paper then feel free to post on our forums which can be found at www.acted.co.uk forward slash forums